Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Rust Belt Collector here, and today we are taking a look at this awesome four pack from the World of Halo line by Jazzwares. This is a Target exclusive, it is part of the 20th anniversary line. So, of course, it's paying homage to the very classic legacy Halos, Halo Combat Evolved, while also showcasing the newest Halo, Halo Infinite, and basically the evolution between these two games. With all that said, let's take a look at this absolutely fantastic set. Now, uh, if you've kept up with this line, this is a Target exclusive, and it's been really hard to get. It's gone up for order multiple times on the website, Target.com. I will leave a link to this item down in the description, but when it goes in stock, there's like four. There's literally a quantity of four available, so four people get lucky, and the rest have to wait until it goes in stock again. This is some weird issue with uh, with Target. We're not really sure why. Uh, many collectors have gotten lucky and gotten this already, which is very fortunate. It took me it took me weeks of trying to finally get this in hand. So I wish you all the best of luck in tracking this down. I do think it's worth it. I think it is worth the effort to get this in hand. Even if it takes multiple tries, just keep turning on those push notifications so that you get notified when it goes back in stock. Turning it around here to the back, we have some very obnoxiously placed stickers. This box art is beautiful. A nice split down the middle showcasing Halo Infinite and Master Chief from Combat Evolved just kind of mended together there, but uh, whoever placed that sticker... I, uh, you should be fired. <laughs> Thankfully, it appears to be one of those very easily removed stickers, like it's not leaving any residue behind. And there you can see the really, really clean artwork. I just love that. That looks absolutely stunning. And although my box is a little bit damaged, I still might just save this box art because it is so cool looking. Apart from those details, this is pretty much your standard Halo packaging that we've seen many times before with Halo Infinite Master Chief, a list of all the characters we're getting, and you know, just the various branding and logos here and there. Now that we've talked about the packaging on the exterior, let's crack this open and take a look at the figures inside. And here the figures are all out of the packaging and they look stunning. I am absolutely so stoked to have this and of course they are unique. You might be thinking that this is a repack of Master Chief and this is a repack of the Grunt Conscript and while you're partially right, there are some subtle differences that we'll get into when we look at each individual figure. Now, I did encounter one problem with these figures with the Grunt Miner and it's partially maybe like a manufacturing error mixed with my own uh, kind of just... I was a little impatient, so we'll get into that as well, but overall, just looking at these figures here on the round table, they look amazing. They just fully encapsulate the characters from the game, and yeah, wh what else can I say? Now, starting things off with the Grunt Conscript, this is a figure we have seen before with the Marine 2-pack, and we've also seen it with a couple recolors, a blue one, a purple one, and I believe also a red one so far. Now, while he is very similar to the original release of this figure, there are a couple subtle differences that I think are really premium, in my opinion, on this figure. I think pretty much all the figures in this four-pack go just a little bit further with paint apps and just give you that much more detail. So, you know, just looking at this here, the orange and the gray, the gray might be a little bit darker on this one, but really where it stands out to me is the extra paint apps we're getting. We have little blue highlights here on the armor as well as on the mask and on the nose that are missing on this figure as well as up here on the back of the uh, the methane tank I guess there on the back so there's more blue highlights up there and also this armband is painted gray whereas here it's just one single orange hit. So coming around here to the back you can see once again the blue highlights there and there that aren't present on this figure. They did change the printing for the branding and everything to be on the lower back rather than the leg. Not a big deal where it is. I, I still don't really like the printed lettering over like a molded lettering, but you could always paint over that if you were so inclined. 
So looking at these side by side, I think they both stack up really great. If you already have several of these like I do, they stack up really well with this one to where you could have a little army of grunt conscripts and they're not going to stand out from one another, but it's just really nice to see these more premium paint apps on this version just as a little upgrade. You know, you get the, the blue highlights, a little bit crisper gray markings, and just overall it just feels that much nicer. For accessories, he comes with a little plasma pistol here. Now, interestingly enough, this plasma pistol was actually packed over top of the Combat Evolved Grunt when this is the Halo Infinite uh, model for the plasma pistol. So just a slight little packaging error there. I don't know if it's with every single one or just mine, but yeah, really nice paint apps here. That green just stands out nicely against the chrome silver. Purple's nice and dark there and just looks so cool. For a comparison in terms of paint apps, once again, this is the previous model we got with the shade turret and this is what we have now. So again, it just feels like they've gone very premium with the paint apps. I'm going to use that word a lot because I, I just feel like that best describes how the these paint apps feel in terms of quality. For articulation on these guys, we'll just go over it really quick because we've seen this before so many times on every single one of the Halo Infinite grunts. So, so we'll just go over it really quick. There's a joint here at the head allowing it to go up, down, and look side to side. At the shoulders, there's a hinge and swivel so you can hinge it up to there, swivel it forward. It encounters that armor there, but you can kind of just pop it out, swivel it all the way around. Hinge and swivel at the elbow all the way around up to there and it can actually kind of like go outward pretty far there on the backswing. And then here at the hand we have a hinge and a swivel with an in and out hinge there. Swivel all the way around. That's another one of the changes that they made from wave one to wave two. So with this original grunt the hand is actually an up and down swivel whereas of course with this one it's in and out. At the torso then, there's a ball joint which gets you a little bit of side to side play. Nothing really to speak of forward and back, but a little bit of swivel there as well. The hips are ball jointed with a thigh swivel so you can get them you know, all the way forward. You can get these little grunts into a seated position. You could probably even pose them in like a sleeping position if you wanted to. And then you can splay them outward pretty far. Pretty much you can get these guys to do the split. So maybe if you wanna have a more gymnastic grunt, you can certainly do that. Then for the knee, you got the double joint that gets you to right there. And then down to the foot, you have the forward facing rocker that gets you that side to side tilt. And you can pick it forward to there on the swivel and all the way back to there. Mine's very ratchety. You can kind of hear that in the uh, in the foot. And I don't think previous ones were quite that noisy, but it's it's fine. Next up, we have the Halo Infinite Master Chief. And I know some of you are probably already thinking, Man, we're getting another Master Chief? Ugh, how many do, of these do we need to have? And I hear you, you know, I totally get that. But this one, I feel, is a little extra special. It is the second one that we've gotten now with the grapple hook sculpted into the forearm. That's something that we first saw in Wave 3. Now, what really makes this Master Chief stand out from all the previous ones we've gotten is that he has a brand new deco, both in the visor as well as just the overall shade of green and weathering that he's coming. And it's really nice to see a fully unique decoed Infinite Chief here. Here side by side we have the Wave 3 Chief and of course this one from the 4-pack. And the deco is completely different. I'm not sure if it was cast in a darker green or if it was just painted over in a darker green. But either way, this one I think is so far the definitive Master Chief. It just is. The color is so much better. The weathering is so much better. It looks amazing. Even the visor here is a much more shiny chrome. This one's a little bit more reddish orange in hue, and this is definitely a bright orange gold. It looks so much better on this one. The scoring and weathering here seems to have been done with maybe like an airbrush. And this one seems to have just been purely dry brushed on with silver and a little bit of black scoring here and there, but mostly it's done in a silver dry brush, which looks so nice. As I mentioned before with the grunt, I just feel like these little paint app changes are what is making this four pack stand out to me as a premium four pack and not just, oh, it's another Master Chief, but hey, at least we get like a CE Chief. No, this is premium and honestly this is going to be my my primary master chief now on display and as well as in like toy photography 
this is the chief to go to, I think. And not only is the figure premium, but I feel like this weapon is as well. It has a lot more paint apps than I remember on previous versions, where we have the little gray strike back there, here for the uh, shell ejection port, and then of course the stripe there across the front. It just looks really, really clean. The paint apps are crisp, they don't have any bleed over. It looks really nice. As always, that can peg right onto the back of Master Chief, and it works really well. Not going to fall off or anything like that. That's one of the really nice things about the weapon design in the world of Halo line. And while this figure may be different in terms of paint apps, he is still the same base figure. So we'll breeze through articulation here real quick. He's going to be the same as any other Master Chief figure we've gotten in the previous waves just with, in my opinion, the best paint apps we've ever gotten on this figure. Up at the top, hinge and swivel, so swivel side to side, really nice. Hinge it forward, hinge it down all the way to there. Hinge and swivel at the shoulders all the way around. You can get them outward to there before the shoulder pad impacts the body. Elbows are single jointed, swivel and hinge, hinge into 90 and then the hinge and swivel the hands all the way around, in and out. Ball joint at the torso, side to side crunch, forward crunch, barely any, back crunch a fair bit. Down to the knees, we have a double jointed knee that gets you all the way to there, and then a forward facing hinge and rocker at the foot gets it all the way back to there, and forward to there, and then that forward facing rocker gives you that nice side to side tilt. So there we are halfway through the pack so far, and these two are absolutely stunning upgrades to what we've already gotten. I really do appreciate the effort that Jazzware has put into these figures to make sure that while they are technically repacks and slight repaints, they really stand out against their predecessors and I think are both the definitive versions of these characters. And now where it all began, the combat evolved Master Chief. I was so stoked when this figure was announced, so glad to have it in hand now. It looks absolutely perfect now that I can see it out of the packaging, hold it in hand, pose it up and all that. It's exactly what I would have wanted out of a CE Spartan. Now initially, I wasn't quite sure if this color of green would be quite accurate to the game, but looking back at the original CE, not the anniversary remaster, it does seem like he had a much lighter color of green and it was very reflective. So it's kind of hard to get an idea of like what the true color of his armor was. But I think that they did a good job. I think that this is pretty close to what it looked like originally on the Xbox. And yeah, I, I have no complaints about this. I think it looks great. Of course, I'm sure that there are people out there that will think it's maybe a little too light or just off in some way and they may repaint this. But you know, with these figures, they take paint very well, so if you feel like doing a custom, or if you feel like just, you know, maybe changing the color a little bit, it's very easy to do so. Like the Halo Infinite Chief, this guy has a lot of silver dry brushing all over his armor, and in this particular case, I really feel like it helps give off the idea of just that shiny armor that he had on the original Xbox. Something about those early graphics, just the, the silver dry brush here, even though it's probably meant as weathering, I think it really just gives off the, the spirit of that original style of graphics. Now, true to the game, his weapon is a slightly different variation than the Halo Infinite one, and this is probably the one that we're going to see in the Halo 3 multi-pack as well. I think the sculpt here absolutely nails the look of Master Chief. The color that is used for his visor just looks so good. It's a really crisp application, and I do believe that on these two Spartans, the visors are now separate pieces, which will go a long way in preventing any kind of overspray on, uh, on the helmet or maybe some missed areas with that. We just gotta take a quick moment and just appreciate how good this figure looks. I think it kind of blends together the classic and the remastered look just a little bit in terms of geometry of the armor. I could be wrong, I haven't played either in probably like six months to a year, so I'd have to go back and like actually compare it to the in-game models, but just the spirit of Combat Evolved is so encapsulated right here with this figure, and I absolutely love it. Now, of course, this figure does have an entirely new sculpt, so that means we do have to go over articulation in maybe a little bit more of an in-depth look. So starting it off here at the head, we have a hinge and swivel. Swiveling side to side does impact the armor there just a little bit, keeping it from maybe spinning all the way around, but, I mean, that is still a really solid range. You can get him to look up, you can get them to look down. The shoulders are nice and exposed, which gets you all the way up to 90. Swivel all the way around. 
The elbows, which I'm really impressed, actually do crunch into 90 perfectly, that there's a nice indent right there on the bicep, and it is a single joint, so you can swivel that all the way around. It, I don't know why you would do that, but you can do it if you want to. The wrists are hinge and swivel, so all the way around, in and out for the hinge. Once again, I do wish that this trigger hand was an up and down hinge instead of the in and out, but I don't know if that's ever going to change. I think I'm just going to have to get used to that, but I think that's what my preference has always been. One up and down, one in and out. Usually the trigger hand makes the most sense to have it be up and down, but again, that's just me. Maybe everyone is uh, against that and I'm just kind of the minority here, but you know, whatever, voice your, voice your opinions there uh, down in the comments. I would actually love to hear what your preference is for for wrist articulation. Now for the torso, because there's like really no gap between the chest, the belt, and the waist, uh, there isn't any kind of ab crunch, but there is a swivel side to side. Moving down to the hips, we have the standard ball joint and thigh swivel we've gotten before. Outward to there, he can sit pretty well. It does splay out just a little bit more than on the other Master Chief, and you can position them to the back just that far. Moving down to the knees, this is the forward position here. You can bend it all the way back to there. And then down to the foot, we have a hinge and a rocker, so forward to there, all the way back to there, and then, of course, you can rock it side to side, allowing you to get some more dynamic poses, which is always appreciated. So for our final figure, yeah, I've got some, I've got some sad news for, for the one that I was looking forward to the most. My grunt's head snapped off, and it's kind of a combination of me not being very careful and a slight factory error. So basically when I got it out of the packaging, I tried to move the head up and down just to kind of free up that joint. It didn't want to move quite right, so I kept forcing it, which is like my cardinal rule here on the channel. You know, if the joint doesn't bend, don't force it, maybe heat it up or something. But I tried to anyways, and I snapped the peg. And in doing so, I found out that the, the joint is sideways. So it wasn't probably meant to be that way. I think that might just be a slight factory error. But yeah, if I had just taken a little bit more time, slowed down a little bit, I could have checked that joint and made sure that, hey, it's, it's sideways and going up and down isn't really possible. But, you know, I rushed it. I was impatient. I really wanted this figure to, to move and get posed for the review. So, yeah, factory error combined with a human error, <laughs> I guess. So, uh, it'll be back to trying to get a second pack of these off of Target.com, which is going to be very frustrating, but it is what it is. Regardless, I still think that there is a lot to talk about with this figure. It is really amazing how much detail and, in some sense, lack thereof is packed into this figure because, of course, this came out on the Xbox way back in, like, what, 2000, 2001? I can't really remember the exact year, but the graphics were not the same as they are today, and so this figure kind of does emulate that lower resolution style. It's not uh, super high res, it doesn't have a lot of weathering or detail, it's a little bit smooth, and I like it that way. In many ways, the grunts from 20 years ago versus the grunts we face now in-game are nearly unrecognizable. I mean, these guys are gray, these guys are more flesh-toned, these guys have actual, like, bone spikes coming out of their knees and elbows, whereas these guys are just kind of more dinosaur scaly, you know? It's definitely the same creature, but just changed as graphics and some design translations changed over time. But I do really appreciate the attention to detail that Jazzwares has put into this particular figure, going back to probably some of the original concept art even, and just emulating everything that these original grunts were. And then moving on to articulation, or in this case kind of the approximation of articulation, uh, there is a hinge and a swivel here, so you could hinge it forward to there and back to there, ideally, and you could of course swivel it side to side. At the shoulders we have a hinge and a swivel, so swiveling it all the way around by popping it out here underneath that armor, upwards to there, single jointed elbow can extend from there to there, and then hinge and swivel all the way around with the wrist, hinging it into there and out to there. At the torso, there is a ball joint allowing you to get some side to side, 
a little bit of forward and back, and of course a swivel as well. Once again, ball joints and thigh swivels here, so outwards really, really far there, which is just crazy to me. You can, of course, swivel that inwards, and again, he could be a sleeping little grunt there if you want him to be, or in this case, a grunt that maybe had an encounter with the French Revolution, but you know, it's just the way that it goes sometimes. Now, the knees are kind of curious just because they have this like bone spike coming out the top here there already is a right angle in the knee joint which is just again coming down to the style of the character model in the game but that knee joint gets you a little bit of a bend there takes a little bit of finagling to get it back there then moving down to the foot once again we have a hinge forward and back and a rocker side to side. For accessories, this little headless grunt comes with the first installment of a legacy plasma pistol. This is the style of plasma pistol we saw in Halo 1, 2, and 3, so it's nice to see it here because I think we'll probably be getting some reuse of this for other legacy sets that revolve around those particular games. The paint apps here are amazing. I mean, you got the green of the muzzle, You've got the gunmetal gray for the handle, the middle piece, and this top panel. And then you have that really cool gold highlight running up the middle there that has just such a nice sheen to it. This is probably the most detailed paint app I've seen on a World of Halo weapon to date, and I am extremely impressed. For a comparison, here it is next to the Halo Infinite model. You can see the Infinite model went a little bit more organic with those rounded edges, whereas the earlier models felt a little bit more industrial, I feel like. A little bit more space age techy, but either way, both are very cool and I love using them in game. So overall, this figure pack is amazing. This is exactly the kind of figure packs I wanted to see from the world of Halo, and they delivered. And then some, really. I was not expecting that this grunt would have so many extra paint apps, and just the sheer level of detail on these two is really wonderful to see with these legacy characters. And while it is difficult to get your hands on this one from Target, it's definitely worth keeping up with it. Just keep trying whenever it pops back in stock. It's it's worth it to try because eventually it will pay off and hopefully sooner rather than later, Target will fix their stocking issues so they'll stock more than four at a time, but we'll just have to wait and see. That is an issue entirely with Target and not with Jazzwares, unfortunately, so they really don't, probably don't have any control over that. But anyways, there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this review of this World of Halo 4-pack. I certainly did. I'm certainly glad to have it in hand and in my collection now. As always, there's a link down in the description if you want to check out my social media, my Instagram where I do toy photography of figures just like this. I also post updates on new releases and things like that so that the community at large can get their hands on figures when they come out. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and be sure to check back in soon for more videos. But as always, I hope you have a wonderful evening, noon, or night. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.